You're listening to the SSPX Podcast. And as we are entering Holy Week, we wanted to share the following sermon given by Father Davide Pagliarani, Superior General of the Society of St. Pius X. On Passion Sunday, 2022, he gave a sermon on the Passion of Our Lord and how Catholics should view the cross. This was given at Holy Cross Chapel in Woking, Surrey, England. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, uh, Amen. It's a pleasure for me to be here today to celebrate this Mass. Uh, and uh, to address a few words to you in this very particular liturgical season, Passion Tide. This is the heart of the liturgical year. The Church is going to celebrate what uh, is uh, dearest to her, the Passion of our Lord. And it's already a bit amazing, it's always a bit amazing that the cross is covered right now when we are supposed to meditate, especially about the cross. But there is a reason behind. It's because uh, the church wants uh, that we meditate about the cross. We watch the cross. We observe the cross as much as we can with the eyes of our Lord. We should try to understand the cross as our Lord understood the cross. That's the reason why the cross is veiled. And what's uh, What is this mystery behind the veil? And why it is so important, so central, not only in the life of our Lord, but in the life of mankind, in the history, and in the life of each one of us. What can we say about this mystery in few words? First of all, the cross is the expression of the will of God. God who loved this world to such an extent that he gave his son. So first of all, the cross is the expression of this love of the Father for sinners. And on the other hand, at the same time, the cross is the expression of the love of our Lord. First of all, for the Father. The cross is the will of the Father. And when we love somebody, we will end to think like him or like her. When two persons, they love each other, they share everything, and at the end they share the same thoughts, the same ideas. Two wills, they become one will out of love. But this is true, first of all, for our Lord. His love for the Father is such that he accepts out of love, out of obedience. It's the same. He accepted the cross as an expression of the will of the Father. So you see, A perfect expression of the love of the Father, a perfect expression of the response of the love of the Son. 
Of course, we can wonder why God, the Father, didn't choose another way to save humanity. The answer is simple. Because cross was the best way to show how much he loves mankind. If you, if you prefer this, all that our Lord suffer is proportional to this love. But at the same time, this mystery of the cross has another, another side. There is something in the cross what, uh, that we have to grasp. Watching the cross, I would say from behind. The cross and the passion of our Lord is also the expression of the hate of Satan. Satan concentrated all his uh, wisdom, so to speak, wickedness in the passion of our Lord. Finding out all that our Lord could suffer. And this is the expression also of the hate of the world for the church. The hate of the world for the supernatural life. This is a struggle because the passion of our Lord is a struggle. This struggle is the struggle of the entire mankind. And that's why the, church, the, the cross of our Lord is dividing the humanity in two parts until the end of time. And this struggle is the struggle also of each one of us. It's impossible, in other words, in other terms, it's impossible to remain indifferent. Either we love the cross, we accept this mystery, we ac and we enter, as our Lord did, we enter also into this mystery with our own life, not only with our faith, with our thoughts, but with our will. It's not enough to watch the cross, to hang the cross on the wall, to believe in the cross, it's not enough. We have to accept the cross with our will, out of love. This is the mystery of the passion of our Lord. And that's why he wanted to show his love, love in order to call back our love also. Either we love this mystery or we refuse it. Or, even worse, we try to explain in it in a different way, giving it a different meaning. That's the modern problem. The modern problem. The great temptation, even for churchmen nowadays, is this one not to refuse the cross as such, but to give to the cross another meaning. And by that way, to offer to the faithful another way to conceive uh, their Christian life without uh, this struggle. This is an illusion. It's not true. It's not fair. Don't be surprised, the words of our Lord. Don't be surprised if the world hates you. Why? Because it hated me first. 
and praying the Father. Our Lord said, the world hates them because I gave them thy word. What's the word of the Father? It's this one. It's the word of the cross. It's the economy of the cross, of redemption. And the world hates this because doesn't want to enter into this economy, into this logic. So it, today is the great occasion not only to contemplate the cross, but to ask uh, our Lord in particular to love the cross, to understand the cross, to understand deeper and deeper whatever is hidden behind the cross, inside the cross. This love and this hate, wherever this, there is love, there is hate. Hate of the opposite, of course. We cannot love God without hating sin. It's another illusion. It's impossible. And uh, in this perspective, even a big problem, even a tragedy, a big cross in one, one word, becomes a blessing. It's perceived as a blessing if we watch it with the eyes of our Lord. We have the example of Our Lady. Our Lady was there watching this tragedy of Calvary. She was there. She was not only contemplating, she was suffering. She was participating. Personally, directly, straight to the mystery of the passion of our Lord. No one as Our Lady was associated to that particular sufferings. And nevertheless, no one as Our Lady realized immediately that that tragedy, that death opened the gates of heaven. The tragedy opened at that moment the gates of heaven for her first. She's the first one who took advantage of the death of our Lord, of the mercies of our Lord. She's the first one who penetrated this mystery of the cross in such a way that she understood fully how whatever for the world is a tragedy for God can be a blessing. Let's ask Our Lady to enter also in this, uh, in this perspective, in this vision of, of reality. Is the only one true. This is the true one. And in particular, it's important to remember this when we are in the middle of a big trial, in the, in the middle of, of a cross, of a problem. Even this uh, great crisis of the church, this passion of the church, that we are uh, living, we are observing around us. This desert in the church itself. Why God could allow such a tragedy? This is the mystery of God, but what is sure is that through this tragedy, God will, uh, will manage to draw out a greater glory, a greater glory for himself, for the church, and for souls. The triumph will be proportional to the humiliation. 
It was true for our Lord on the cross. It is true for the Church. It is true, in a way, for each one of us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.